the glory of devotional service is so immaculate <coughs> that so immaculate is the glory of devotional service that it is re recommended at any time, at any given circumstance. A karma, sarva karma ba, moksha karma udharati, tivrena bhakti yogena. Does it have? Does it have purusham param? Jayitam. Jayitam purusham Whether you have all the material desires or no material desires, or you have the desire for liberation, from the material sufferings, regardless, it is recommended you serve Krishna. Now, this what's just explained here in Krishna consciousness is on an absolute level. That's very difficult to accept. <laughs> it's something so high that it's on an absolute level. In other words, like you have thousands of duties, but when you surrender to Krishna, all of them are cancelled. I mean, you have to understand that surrendering to Krishna means to surrender Krishna to Krishna by Krishna's terms. <laughs> it's not by your own terms. Surrender to Krishna does have terms. For example, somebody says, surrender to Krishna means, oh, I, I join the temple, I, I do devotional service, and I don't worry that I have two children living somewhere outside. Huh? That's not... Surrender to Krishna by Krishna's terms. So it, it's like a very complex situation. It's not like something just superficially you say, oh, I'm chanting Hare Krishna and doing some service and now I'm free of all the other duties. Or for example, you have a, a debt at the bank and you say, I'm not joined to Krishna consciousness, so you can cancel my debt. Thank you, not agree. We are sorry, but so the the whole idea is that Krishna is so powerful that he can harmonize anything. He he will he will give us such a great opportunity to leave the karmic circle. Because without that, you can never leave the karmic circle. You're so deeply indebted here and there and everywhere. No way out. No way. But there is this... I'll give you an extreme example. An extreme example, because it happens to me all the time. I meet people like, let's say, single moms. And to be a single and mom in this world is not really a very pleasant situation, you know? Because you have financial problems, how to maintain yourself. And so single moms and they can kind of think, what am I going to do in this world? No? Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath. Then they come and talk to me. I say, you know, you can do something wonderful. The best thing you can do, you open an ashram. I look at me, what? Me open an ashram? Yeah, I say, well, you're already half of an ashram, you and your child. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's no. Uh, but if you open an ashram, you start preaching on behalf of your spiritual master, you end up getting more people to come want to live with you. They, your, your child is going to have more examples, more beautiful experience instead of having a depressed mom who is just running out, seeing how to get some money, then come back and just with her child. You know, it's, it's pretty... I mean, if that person is really bold and wants to serve Krishna, Surely you can do it. Surely you can do it. I've seen people turning around and making successful, successful situations out of that. Like making the best from a bad bargain, so you can say so. Anybody can open the ashram if he has his heart put at Krishna's lotus feet. I mean, what means an ashram? A Grihastha ashram is an ashram too. It's just two people and they live together, have children, so they better have an ashram, otherwise what kind of a miserable life they're going to have? Huh? 
just with beer in the in the fridge and the television and the altar. I mean, this is not going to make them any give them anything in the future. So whether we are whether be a, a Grihasta or a Brahmachari or a Vishnu Priya or a single mom or a single dad, open an ashram or be in an ashram, harmonize with an ashram, do something with an ashram, because an ashram means an atmosphere of Krishna consciousness. However high and low it may be, it's an atmosphere of Krishna consciousness. There will be devotional service. Just the fact that you have an altar and you bring the plate from the kitchen and offer it on the altar, this is already an amazing thing. Huh? Most people, they, they, they eat from the pot before even thinking of it, you know. <laughs> they, want it, they, they can't even think that they, they cooked for somebody else, no? Mm. Or, 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 or even worse, they buy everything ready-made in the supermarket, throw it in the microwave, and then eat it directly. There's no no prashadam consciousness. So, so the very fact that we say we only eat prashadam that makes a big difference. So anybody, it doesn't matter who, can make an ashram if they are surrendered to their guru, and if their guru tells them to. <laughs> no? It's also in you know, circumstances. No, I have to study it, but I'm very quick, quick in that. I'm very quick. Say, you better make an ashram because because I don't see any good luck and good happiness for them just hanging around alone and feeling depressed. I don't see anything there. I, I really, I really feel, and I, I personally feel the joy of being around devotees. And if you start going to a temple, you go and preach. I mean. Uh, how do, you, how do you start an ashram? Oh, by, by printing an invitation card. <laughs> huh? you say, this is the address and here we have a program every week once or every night. Whatever you want, whatever you can, whatever you put up into reality. And you can open a Namahata Sangha, you can open a Namahata Kendra and you can open Namahata Mandir. Even that discrimination is given clearly by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And Namahata Sangha is a place where you preach once a week. Or maybe even once a month if you're really a weak guy. Huh? Huh? I mean, that once, once, once a, a, a week you have a program. What do you do? Well, you read the book. Open the book and read Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. My dear Lord Krishna, please inspire me. I'm useless, I don't know what to do. I'm helpless and now the, all these people sitting in front of me and they expect me to say something sensible. Huh? So, well, how are you going to do that? So I say, Prabhupada, you are sensible, you're divine, you're transcendental, you gave me this book, I'm reading from it and now I'm telling, now let's do something about it. Now this is what Prabhupada says. Do devotional service, even though you may fall down later. I mean, this is a kind of a strange, strange encouragement. No? Uh, don't worry about it. Just start. Said, but I may slip. So what? Huh? Save yourself one day or two or a week or months against Maya. I mean, you, are, you like Shila Harijamaj in Colombia used to say that. Mm -hmm, you're still here. Very nice. Let's see where you're going to be in one week. We're going to be in one month. In one year, you think you can snatch away from Maya an entire year? Huh? We will see how long you will stay here. <laughs> so he was challenging the devotees this way, you know. Mm -hmm. Very good. Congratulations. Another day out of Maya. Huh? Another concert. Very fantastic. Huh? Another book published. Another book translated. Good, good. Good job. And what will happen tomorrow? I don't know. I hope tomorrow will even be better, but that will be seen tomorrow. Now we are here today. And what are we going to do today? Are we going to preach? Are we going to have an ashram? Are we going to have a, a, a retreat? Are we going to uh, fight? Are we just going to harmonize? What is it? What are we going to do? Now here, Krishna is so generous, and he's giving this all encouraging that if you try to do what Krishna wants you to do, then as a matter of fact, Krishna will take care of the details. He will take care of the rest of things. And I can tell you not one or two, but hundreds of stories that when you put yourself in the hands of Krishna, marvelous, marvelous things take place. Marvelous things. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter where. I went to Belém a few days ago. Um, Belém is, is on the Amazon Delta. 
in Brazil, one of those most amazing places in the world you see a river, a river. <laughs> You can't see the other side of the river, it's just everywhere, it's water, water, water. <laughs> and still there's people living in the middle of it, all over, in all the Delta Islands, and so, so something like that. And first time I went there, and before I knew it, it was only three days, we were doing puja too, with a whole lot of people. The, the, assistant of the governor came and and he invited us to the, the nature reserve where they're cleaning the water for a big city and and they're saying we can make programs there every time and everything like out of nowhere all the facilities appear so it's krishna is not helpless you see he and helpless so you just have to surrender to him. And what does it mean? You try. Surrender to Krishna means to try. You try. To do. And it, it may even sound like almost dangerous. As a matter of fact, it is dangerous to go into any big city and try to do something surrounded by thieves, drug addicts, and this and that, and all that. It's kind of dangerous, but when you surrender to Krishna, you make yourself dependent on Krishna. Some far out things must happen. That's why I told you better make a place where you can do a lot of preaching, and not just simply selling some items. And being and being afraid that people will steal from you, because when you have a shop in this in this world, most people come want to steal something. A few want to buy also. <laughs> it's like this this material world is just full of thieves, and and the more the more difficult life becomes, more thieves are there. Mm -hmm. So, but. When you give Krishna consciousness, I mean, like, I, I have invented many types of things uh, so that people may come to the temple and that they may, how to maintain the temple. Usually, all these ideas are copied hundreds of times by people. They think, oh, good idea, let me do that for myself. But uh, we are still trying to figure out how people can copy to give Krishna to others. <laughs> because if they can do that, then while they are fruitive, they will do something good. They will do something for the sake of others. And the imitationism is a, is a very strong element in all this, in this material world. There's so much imitation. I mean, I'm, I'm also imitating. I'm imitating Prabhupada and Sri Ramaji would lecture every day. So I'm also trying to, to, to lecture and speak. And, and I feel so grateful every time I get the chance to speak on the Bhagavatam and on Srila Prabhupada's beautiful, beautiful commentaries. I, I mean, I, I belong to the Prabhupada fan club, obviously, but, uh, but not just because I'm a member of his fan club. You know, his purpose are just extremely wonderful. They, they give so much love and so much understanding of the scriptures. So I, I cannot even believe Prabhupada. You know, I, I, I was, people told me that Prabhupada was working at night. And I couldn't believe it. I said, how can he do that? So one night I stayed up when Prabhupada was in Schloss Rettersen in Germany. And I stayed up purposefully. I wanted to do what Prabhupada does at one o'clock in the morning. And he had he had a, a guard in front of his door. Prabhupada used to have a guard that nobody do anything to him. I don't know. It was a custom or something. Or that Prabhupada had somebody. So the guard was asleep. He was sitting there. So, so I I sat next to him and out of the room I heard Prabhupada in the dictaphone, no? Yes, true. Krishna is a supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, he challenged Jarasandra and uh, told him to get lost. <laughs> Prabhupada was working at night. <laughs> because otherwise he could not have finished all those books, you know. When he could do that, going around preaching all day, when did he do all these books? It's an unbelievable work. Unbelievable! It's a it's a historical feat. 
and Prabhupada's purports, you know, they are just like serve Krishna under any condition. Don't be so afraid, just serve Krishna. Make a temple in Burgos. Make something. Make something far out. Don't don't wait. Who knows how many times people have the opportunity? I don't know. I do anything which is necessary. I mean, even opening an English school. I still met one devotee in the in the jungles in Ecuador. He opened an English school and he maintains a huge farm and everything. He got now a super spoon revolution restaurant going on, everything like out of love. So we are quite flexible. Krishna Conscious is very flexible. And Prabhupada sent his first devotees out to have jobs because there was no income and they they needed something, so some of the devotees had jobs. But as soon as the books started arriving, Prabhupada discouraged us from having jobs. So why, why should you have a job? Like nowadays when people like good devotees, they're, they're working hard to get a few dollars just to survive. No? I say, come on, you know, all day you have to wear a suit and a tie and like this, and an office and you cannot speak what you feel. Why not go out and preach? Why not become a saint and a devotee? You can do anything. I mean, we have such a variety of material. I mean, we can, we can literally inundate the world with Krishna, with Kata stuff, lectures, books, uh, proper folio. <laughs> what what is it? What we don't have? We we have just like. Almost an unlimited supply. But most people don't know we have that. Because we have not made an effort to share it with them. I consider that violence. <laughs> this is a very, a very harsh degree of violence that you have nectar, which you can just copy in a computer and get a proper folio, and you meet a guy and you don't speak about proper books. I mean, I'm reading one shloka and I'm mesmerized. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Prabhupada Folio has not only the whole book, it has all the books he wrote, you know? and, and a person can actually be saved from illusion by getting this nectar. And we have this nectar and we are hiding it. But because what? We are too lazy or, or we, are, we are too shy or we think we are not qualified. What's the use of this shyness? Like, like I, I tell you, I was sent to, I mean it's such funny little experiences in your own life. I was sent to Brazil, there was, the temple president blooped, he left the temple with a big depth and there was nobody and I just happened to come through the area and they went, oh, we need you here. I said, are you ready? So I said, if Prabhupada wants it, sure. So I was there in, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. In, in, I didn't speak one word of Spanish or, or Portuguese or anything. And so I was there with a translator trying to get by and everything. So there was no good translation either. Very soon I started realizing the translator wasn't that good. So, so I started giving classes in Portuguese after two months. That must have been the most lousy classes and the most lousy Portuguese you can ever imagine. <laughs> but I fearlessly spoke because there was only one thing, it was the message, it was the urgency. And the people accepted it. They accepted it. They gave, they gave me so much trust and so much love because they saw I was struggling to try to do something. And Swami Maharaj, he learned Spanish in a few months himself, you know. When you really want to do something, you really put yourself up there, it comes. It, the mercy comes. Just get the mercy. Just, just be there where, where, where you're needed. So in other words, you learn the swimming in the water. You don't learn it with the stomach on a chair and doing like this. You, know? <laughs> you can do that for a hundred years and you still don't know how to swim. You have to get into the water. So the same, the same thing you have to do when you want to when you want to learn how to preach. You have to put yourself into the position where you have to preach. 
When people come into you and say, hey, what is this all about? You gave me this invitation. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, really. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, here's the book. <laughs> but I don't have any books. Now we have nice books here. No? Fantastic, you know. But when you start preaching somewhere, you have nothing. You don't have no capital, nothing. Everything is like, but don't worry. Krishna is going to supply. He's going to send somebody. It's going to be incredible. And if there's money required, usually the money just shows up. And if it doesn't show up, then you preach without money. It doesn't matter either. Huh? It doesn't take much money to go for kirtan or, uh, or something. So in other words, I take it like this. And I, I feel very comforted. I feel very... Uh, encouraged by this purpose and this verse that regardless if something was wrong, regardless if there's some some difficulty, some danger may come up in the future, okay, then you work that out when that danger comes. But just have your faith. Put your faith in Krishna. I will work on your behalf and you will back me up. You know, Shivananda wasn't qualified. He was just a young young guy who ran away from the army. He didn't want to do army service, so he went to Canada. And he, they, they, they call it when you, when you escape from military Jesus. service. Jesus. He was doing that. And then he was in Canada and uh, in Montreal. And then his grandmother said, I'll give you a thousand dollars. Deserter he was. Deserter, <laughs> deserter, yeah. <laughs> So, so his mother gave him a, a, a thousand dollars. The guy was maybe 21 years old or something, or 20. So he wrote Prabhupada a letter. I got a thousand dollars. I think it's a good opportunity. I can start the mission in Europe. <laughs> Just a kid huh? with a thousand dollars, bold enough. Prabhupada said, okay, <laughs> go ahead, try it. You got the idea, do it. <laughs> He went to Amsterdam and he sat on the street and chanted, just like Prabhupada did. He got a newspaper article about himself chanting in the street, sent it to Prabhupada and said, but this boy is really successful. Hmm? He already got into the press. <laughs> just, just with a pair of cartels in the street of Amsterdam. But then for some reason Shivananda thought that Amsterdam was a difficult place. He should try with the tough guys, so he went to Berlin. I mean, that was at that time the divided city city, the uh, pretty crazy place, no? But he decided to go there. So very soon after he sends Prabhupada, just tea. Uh, so, so he sent Prabhupada a picture of a very nice big building is that this is our Radha Krishna temple in Berlin now. <laughs> what happened there? How did this boy get this house? What happened there? So there were some other German devotees all from German background. So, so Prabhupada said, you better go and help this boy there. One was Krishna Das. He was jeweler. So, so when he went to Berlin, he found out that that big building which Prabhupada and Shivananda had sent the building, uh, the, the picture, it was just the front of the building, like the, the inside was all bombed out from the war. <laughs> <laughs> and in the, in the end of the property, like there was one remaining room. <laughs> and that one remaining room he had rented. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. I mean, Krishna consciousness is, is full of surprises. You know, you go, you 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 adapt to the circumstances. You know, Why? you know the the temple in in Bogota it was started in a garage. The devotees got a garage and, and started preaching there. And, I was just, the other day I was in Santo Dominican Republic and I spoke with Gobata Prabhu. Gobata was that devotee who actually rented this garage in, in Bogota. 
and uh, who started that. And he went with his wife. So they were living together, husband and wife, and the Bhaktas in a garage. Huh? It started the movement there. So, I mean, I'm not telling you st stories of camp out, like doing some camping. I'm, I'm, te I'm telling you the stories of the reality of the Krishna conscious movement, and it shouldn't be different today. There's still plenty of cities and countries nobody has heard about Krishna. They don't know anything about it. And if you have an understanding, if you have a belief in the Bhagavatam, you see, uh, this, uh, here it is prescribed duties and surrender to Krishna. All these things are mentioned here, but if you come down to our Lord Chaitanya and Prabhupada movement, this means preaching. This means to go out and to take the message of Krishna in one way or another and make a good use of your time. Because in one day you can speak to 50 people. If you're having a job, you have no time to talk to anyone. And you must even be afraid to say. I spoke to the Secretary of the American States. Secretary of the American States, that was like a high position, you know. In, and he's a friend, he came with me to India, he's a vegetarian. So I told him, Freddy, let us do some more intensive vegetarian propaganda through your ministry, through your, through your position. He said, if I say one word which one of the presidents in all these countries don't like, immediately they are my case. I cannot say anything. I'm totally, I'm just a secretary. I, I said, well, the guy's making lots of money. He's in this big position. He cannot speak his mind. I always spoke my mind ever since from the school days. That's why they threw me out of school. <laughs> I say, we know what guys like you are like always opening your mouth and saying what you think. <laughs> huh? But this is, has been my life, my joy, to say what I think, you know, and everything from every point of view, but I never had anything good to say. So, <laughs> so that was really a problem. So, so when you met, when I met Shila Prabhupada, he was so kind to give us something valuable to talk about. <laughs> Otherwise, what are you going to do? Before I could only tell the people what I don't like, which was most of it, you know, of the whole life. You know? uh, but finally I could tell them there's something I like. And I like it so much that, that I'm, I'm ready to go for it. I'm ready to go for it. I'm ready to send uh, single moms to open temples. I'm ready to uh, to go into the jungles without anything and to start a little eco community somewhere. I'm ready to invade a house. <laughs> if there's a house, if there's a house empty doing nothing, and then let's go in and start a place here. You know, as a matter of fact, the first temple I joined was an invaded house. <laughs> It was on the on the sixth floor, and the devotees had just cracked it or the door and made it a temple under the ceiling, and the whole house was full of hippies who had also invaded that place. You know, the, the government had declared the building as non-livable or something. You know, and it was pretty austere. There was only one tap in the whole house, which was in the back side. So you had to go down six floors, go to the back side, and then uh, open the tap strong tap. We took our showers in the morning, you know. But it's the sweetest of the memories of my life. <laughs> the sweetest memories of being in the temple and going down in the morning and taking a shower from this tap and, and filling a bucket to bring bring water for the cooking up there. We had, we had a grand old time. So, she, this is, I mean, yeah, okay, I understand that not everybody can do this. Not everybody's ready to go to this extreme of putting himself up into the next moment surprise. But when I went to see Matura Nath's restaurant in Kurchili, <laughs> I touched my head. I said, is this for real? Is this for real? This whole park area, this arrangement, this huge thing, I don't still... Still, I have not digest, digested really what Krishna wants us to do there. Uh, but 
some such an amazing facility in oh, such an amazing mm -hmm. place like Karchali. It's really it's everything is amazing. No? The, 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 the Thracian temples they are amazing. The river is amazing. It's 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 like one more of the places Krishna is needed. A thirst for Krishna. In the whole world is thirst for Krishna. So who's going to go there? Who's going to be merciful? Who's going to go on Sankirtan every day in Karchali and inviting people to chant the name of Krishna? No? I mean, it's just like, it's always hard work, but, but we like that. We like hard work. Because in the passion we have, then with that passion, the best thing is we work very hard. So there's less less chance of fall down when you work hard. You should think I have no time to fall down. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Huh? Like something like this. No, no, no. no. Too much service. Like uh, huh? Haridas Taco. No, he said, no. I can't fall down today. I haven't finished my rounds. You know. Huh? Come back tomorrow. <laughs> so Maya will always come back every day and ask you, "Are you ready to fall down today?" No, sorry, I have too much seva. You know, I, I really have to attend to all the visitors who come to the temple. So I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> So in a way, you know, this is the Krishna conscious story, you know, and if you think I can't do it, or if you think it's not for me, I think you're wrong. I think you can do it, and I think it's for you, because I don't think there's anything better for you to do. I don't really think there's anything better than devotional service, and that's confirmed here. It's 100% endorsed. You don't even have to worry. You run away from the military, you run away from anything. If you're going to do devotional service, you'll be fine. So you can run away from the duties of this world, but of course not in an irresponsible way. You can run away towards the higher, but not. But, the, but there's, there's, there's different circumstances anyway in this world. And. Uh, in a way, Prabhupada just gave us the formulas. He gave us the formulas for ecstatic living and ecstatic preaching. And an unlimited variety of what you can do. Some open a vegetarian restaurant afterwards. Well, what's the big deal with opening a vegetarian restaurant? You just just collect some money and find a place where the people can't hand, run the restaurant anymore, and then you run it. Give them a little money. I mean, in Bogota we have done that now. I don't know how many vegetarian restaurants the devotees have. You know, ten, ten, ten in one city. You know, we just buy a restaurant. What's a big deal? I mean, there's restaurants selling everywhere. Because the restaurant business is very much a family business, so so if you, sometimes the cook dies or something, they don't know how to run it without it, then they sell it rather to get rid of it before closing it and not getting anything out of it, you know. And then if you have a nice restaurant, then you have a space for preaching. Yesterday I went to see one restaurant which belongs to Elisabetta, one of our devotees from here. Well, it's such an amazing place for preaching, I can hardly imagine. It was just, just like a palace in Sofia. Beautiful palace. No? Unfortunately, they're not preaching there, but, uh, but uh, they could if they wanted to. They would have the best place. Just an amazing place. So, so we, we have to encourage people to do things for Christians and not waste their lifetime, not waste their time. Because <coughs> if you start preaching the, the glories of the Lord, all your life will turn auspicious. Everything will be, become meaningful. And I know, people, especially people who are a little bit established in the society, you know, they say, uh-oh, what is he trying to do? 
Is he trying to send me out on the street to collect? Is he trying to uh, to make me live with eight people in one room? Uh, <laughs> what is he trying to do? Uh, well, I, I tell you, that's how you get into the most incredible circumstances in life if you are ready to harmonize and follow what Prabhupada says. And shelter, you know, people need shelter. So many people need shelter. How many people of us, how many of us became devotees because we looked for shelter and found it with the devotees and then we turned out and decided to be a devotee? It's a, been a very common way that people became devotees, which is looking for shelter. So if devotees can offer shelter to others, it's fantastic. We have often the discussion in our ashrams, how quick can you re receive a person? And some people, like sometimes you have a little bad experience and you say, mm, let them come at least one month to the temple every day. So it's, it's a useless proposal because most people, if they don't have shelter, how are they going to come one month to the temple? That means they're well established outside. Besides, even people who are initiated, they don't make it to come to the temple every day. So, so how are you going to expect somebody who's coming out of the Maya world to come every day to the temple? Or to do devotional service, or to, to do this or that. It remembers me of uh, Ambu Yaksha. Ambu Yaksha is the classical story. He, he, he was on drugs in Washington, D.C. Finally, he lay down in the street somewhere, like some people do. I don't know if you ever went through that experience, but. Some people do, you see people lying in the streets, no? So he was one of those, and so he was lying down right next to the garbage can. So at that some point, point he got up and he looked in the garbage can, and there he saw a Krishna book. Krishna book was lying in the garbage can. He said, well, that's interesting, what is that book all about? So he took it out. And he read and read and read and read and read. <laughs> this is too much, you know. He was still like on the, the next morning after drugs, you know, so he was like. Then he reached the point to see there's a list of addresses. And there was an address in Washington. So he didn't go home, he went straight to the temple. Dirty. You can imagine how he was looking like. So he went to the body and said, Who are you? What do you want? And the body said, I just read this book and I thought, I better come quickly before all your space is filled up. Uh, this is, this is, looked at it, I want the space. He said, I want to join. But it's, you know, somehow that they didn't let him go in. So what did the guy do? He went in the garden of the temple and sat down there and kept reading the book. <laughs> After the devotees saw him sitting there a few hours reading the book, says, "Come on, take a shower." <laughs> so he became a spiritual master. He became a sannyasi. He he did, did so many wonderful things in his life, you know. You don't know the, what magic Krishna plays with all of us, you know, you don't know. So, so I, I always finally I turn them down. I say, no. If you are afraid, then make one room which you have for the newcomers. And there you have an older devotee who trains them up as soon as they come and give them some idea, because that devotee is doing a great job, no? Especially if it's like Mexico, every day people are coming and wanted to be there. Uh, but, but it's like that, so you have to check them out, you have to train them up. I came at 9 o'clock at night to the temple, also dirty, similar story, only I wasn't taking drugs. I was already had left that long time. So, but I was like, 
the devotees didn't know me. So I went there and, and, and they asked me, what do you want? I said, I want to take shelter. I want to stay with you. They asked me, how long? I, said, I guess a week or so. Mm -hmm. And the other said, okay, come to me. And I was this invaded, this invaded house in, in Dusseldorf. They asked me to come in. And it was so late, they already had finished prasadam. They only had some cauliflower water with turmeric. That was the only thing they had left. So I drank cauliflower water with turmeric. First time I tasted turmeric in my life, I never forget it. Uh, and of course, turmeric water was tasted great. Uh, so anyhow, they didn't look, they didn't ask. They, so whenever people say discriminate on who you receive, no, I think about myself arriving there. If they would have given many difficult things to me, I probably would not have lasted. I would have thought, no, all these people, they don't like me. So I went to Yoga Ashram before. Oh, I went to Omkarananda Ashram in Switzerland. I made a big, long journey. Yeah, let me join the yogi here in Switzerland. Now that sounds great. That must be a great yoga ashram. And I went there and, and finally got there also after long hitchhiking and all that. Finally I got to the door of that ashram. So I went there and I was with a friend. We were traveling together. And he said, we want to see the guru. They look at us. We want to see the guru. So they they set us in in a kind of a waiting lounge, like a dentist waiting lounge or something. And they had one tape running there. They had like a, you know, there was this 12 minutes non-ending tapes they had before. So it was running like one tape with the same same music, same sound. So we were sitting there. <laughs> Nobody talked to us. Nothing sitting there, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. And while we were sitting there, fancy cars come, fancy ladies get out of the cars and are taking to Guru this chambers, like probably donors of the no? in and out. No? Well, we weren't qualified for the mercy of Omkarananda because after four hours like this without a glass of water, nothing, you know. I looked at my friend, I think, I think we came to the wrong place. <laughs> I mean, we were ready to surrender, you know, we were there to, we were looking for a guru and, and serving a guru. We just heard, heard about him, and the yogi loves this in the Swiss mountains. You know. we, didn't, we didn't discriminate between this or that, no? but that wasn't it, we could understand. It wasn't for us, so we said, thank you. We took off, we were totally frustrated because this was the, the high-end guru for, <laughs> for the rich and famous. But this we had to go through. So Prabhupada has a different approach, you understand? This Bhagavatam purpose is such an approach. Everybody should take shelter of Krishna. Everybody should start doing devotional service. And that's what I'm trying to impress upon people. I don't know how, how much they can realize it. I don't know how long they last. I don't know how, uh, when they will, their frustrations of the material world will be like kind of mitigated and then they want to return to continue enjoying. Hmm? I don't know. It's not even my business. It's my business to give what I got from my guru. Let's see if somebody wants to take it up because we are all one in the same position. Krishna is our Lord and we are his servants. So we all have a right to serve him. We all have a right, we all have an invitation to go back to home, back to God and to be with him. We are all in that same exclusively wonderful position. So now you make with it what you want. But don't give up. Don't give up. And if you ever get married, then open a preaching place together with your wife. And get get together really in that spirit. Why? 
because then your life is going to be full of meaning and you don't have any, really have time to fight and, and, and no time to to get entangled just just focus on this preaching it's my recommendation and comfortable living I mean I'm just a little little nobody but I have so many palaces I could stay in. <laughs> so many people I know, fancy houses, this and that. They say, Maharaj, will you please stay? We may give you this room, we give you swimming pool. What am I going to do there? Of course, if they tell me that they will turn their house into a temple, then we can do that. Huh? But otherwise, I have no business staying anywhere comfortable. I prefer ten times to sleep with six people in one room if they can bear my snoring. Sleep <laughs> <laughs> with six people means we're going to get up early and have a class. Otherwise, you're alone by yourself, no class to listen to, and no class to, to nobody to speak to. So then, if you want this empty life. The best companion, the morning newspaper. <laughs> huh? Okay, let me hear of all the gossip in the world. So I don't really think I'm an extremist. <laughs> I, 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 th I think I just took it the way it is, and and if I haven't fallen down from my service and run away from Krishna consciousness, I don't really know why. I've seen so many people run away, so many people do other things after a while, but for me, I'm terribly scared of the material world. I don't want to be without devotees or without this program. I, I don't want to. Makes me scared. When I fly in an airplane all surrounded by karmis, I get scared. <laughs> because sometimes you're lucky and you meet someone who wants to hear about Krishna. But it's rather rare. I mean, rather rare than somebody wants to talk a whole flight with you about Krishna. But it has happened to me. It has happened to me that people wouldn't let me sleep. They wanted me to keep talking. Then you're really lucky. Huh? And you know, future of this place. Yes. And there's only light we're going to give to the people is wonderful devotional establishments, some settlements. It's the only light we can give to the people. There's no light in the raw, in the shopping malls and in the, in the, in the, in the sports palaces and all that. There's no light there. 